Um, I think we have time for one more question. Yes, sir. Um, are you able to measure if the emotions are positive or negative? Is there any evidence? That's a great question. Um, I certainly could answer that, but I'd be curious uh, <laughs> what you guys think. Um, the, the, the easiest way to frame that um, is to think about emotions in, uh, in two frameworks. One is what's called a categorical framework. Are you happy, sad, uh, ambivalent? Um, the other is what's called a dimensional framework. Are you having a response or not? Uh, Interscope clearly excels at the dimensional framework. Because it turns out people are actually fairly good about telling you whether you like something or not, or whether you're happy or sad. What they're terrible at is describing the depth of that response. That's number one. And then number two, uh, we've worked very hard to tweak our algorithms so that there's a certain positive bias to them. So when uh, Sebastian and uh, uh, Maria and Stacy uh, and Libby look at our engagement trace, when that's going up, that's generally a positive thing. That means it's going to do the kinds of things in their audience that they want. And when it's going down, uh, we, we start to be concerned about things like channel changing, fast forwarding, uh, and general disengagement. What would you add to that? I, I would just like to, to add that negative emotion can be good. Okay, so you and, and we know, by the way, that uh, sometimes you are more impacted by a negative emotion than you are by a positive emotion, because because of the arousal of the signal. So if uh, if you are feared, you will have a very high level of emotion, and then that's something that happens. So obviously, in a in a storytelling, you want to have the resolution of the negative emotion, but it's not always bad to have negative emotion. So we are more interested by. Uh, a peak, whatever the sense of the uh, the direction of the emotion, than to have something which is flattish. Yeah, and at the end of the day, the way what, what Stacey was talking about story and how it fits into a story, I think, is what you're alluding to. Because sometimes you want that negative need state to then build towards a uh, towards a resolution. Brian, just, just add one more thing to that. We tested things like uh, horror movies and recruited audience of people that uh, like horror movies and don't like horror movies. What happens is both groups have intense responses. But the way our algorithms work, they, they look at how they, the uh, signals go across the audience. For people that are watching this horror movie, uh, a group of people and it's coming up to the scene that's going to create this horror response that they want to have, the audience responds in a similar way. All the, say, 60 people across the group. And, and on our measures, the way our algorithms work, when everyone is responding together, it goes up. For the people that don't like the horror movies, what happens is they retreat from paying attention to the screen. They have intense responses, but they're thinking about other things, and their signals are all different from each other. They're not paying attention to this content. It creates a strong response, but on our algorithms, it's very low. So people that are aversive to it, they're no longer having emotional responses to this content, and so they're aversive to this content. The people that like it, that want these responses, even if they're negative, are actually high on our measure, and we've correlated that to a, a number of different behaviors after the fact, very positive things like word of mouth and viewership and, and those types of elements. So the, the algorithms are definitely tweaked uh, for engagement rather than happiness.